Section 89 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pamela Krantz. Women of History by Anonymous. Madame de Stael. Born 1766, died 1817. Geoffrey. The most powerful writer that her country has produced since the time of Voltaire and Rousseau, and the greatest writer of a woman that any time or any country has produced. Her taste, perhaps, is not quite pure, and her style is too irregular and ambitious. These faults may even go deeper. Her passion for effect, and the tone of exaggeration which it naturally produces, have probably interfered occasionally with the soundness of her judgment and given a suspicious colouring to some of her representations of fact. At all events they have rendered her impatient of the humbler task of completing her explanatory details, or stating in their order all the premises of her reasonings. She gives her history in abstracts, and her theories in aphorisms, and the greater part of her works, in place of presenting that systematic unity, from which the highest degrees of strength and beauty and clearness must ever be derived, may be fairly described as a collection of striking fragments in which a great deal of repetition does by no means diminish the effect of a good deal of inconsistency in those same works however whether we consider them as fragments or as systems we do not hesitate to say that there are more of original and profound observations more new images greater sagacity combined with higher imagination, and more of the true philosophy of the passions, the politics, and the literature of her contemporaries, than in any other author we can now remember. She has great eloquence on all subjects, and a singular pathos in representing those bitterest agonies of the spirit, in which wretchedness is aggravated by remorse, or by regrets that partake of its character though it is difficult to resist her when she is in earnest we cannot say that we agree in all her opinions or approve of all her sentiments she overrates the importance of literature either in determining the character or affecting the happiness of mankind and she theorizes too confidently on its past and its future history on subjects like this we have not yet facts enough for so much philosophy and must be contented, we fear for a long time to come, to call many things accidental which it would be more satisfactory to refer to determinate causes. In her estimate of the happiness and her notions of the wisdom of private life, we think her both unfortunate and erroneous. She makes passions and high sensibilities a great deal too indispensable, and varnishes over all pictures too uniformly with the glue of an extravagant or affected enthusiasm. She represents men, in short, as a great deal more unhappy, more depraved, and more energetic than they are, and seems to respect them the more for it. In her politics she is far more unexceptionable. She is everywhere the warm friend and animated advocate of liberty, and of liberal practical and philanthropic principles. On these subjects we cannot blame her enthusiasm, which has nothing in it vindictive or provoking, and are far more inclined to envy than to reprove that sanguine and buoyant temper of mind, which after all she has seen and suffered, still leads her to overrate, in our apprehension, both the merits of past attempts at political amelioration, and the chances of their success hereafter it is in that futurity we fear and in the hopes that make it present that the lovers of mankind must yet for a while console themselves for the disappointments which still seem to beset them if madame de stael however predicts with too much confidence it must be admitted that her labours have a powerful tendency to realise her predictions her writings are all full of the most animating views of the improvement of our social condition and the means by which it may be effected the most striking refutations of prevailing errors on these great subjects and the most persuasive expostulations with those who may think their interest or their honour concerned in maintaining them 
even they who are the least inclined to agree with her must admit that there is much to be learned from her writings and we can give them no higher praise than to say that their tendency is not only to promote the interests of philanthropy and independence but to soften rather than exasperate the prejudices to which they are opposed with our manners and society she is not quite well pleased though she is kind enough to ascribe our deficiencies to the most honourable causes in commiserating the comparative dullness of our social talk however has not this philosophic observer a little overlooked the effects of national tastes and habits and is it not conceivable at least that we who are used to it may really have as much satisfaction in our own humdrum way of seeing each other as our more sprightly neighbours in their exquisite assemblies End of Madame de Stael. Recording by Pamela Kranz.